So this is one of those topics you'll see a lot of people talking about when it comes to Bleach. It often gets referenced when we're talking about characters like Aizen, Kisuke, Mayuri, characters like that where like, oh, they're really, really smart and they can come up with these plans. But have you ever considered who the actual smartest character in Bleach actually is? And why they would be considered to be the smartest character? Because that's going to be what we're talking about in today's video. I know that everybody thinks about Kisuke and Mayuri as pretty much like one and two, and then there's Aizen in the discussion. But with Can't Fear Your Own World, we got another sleeper agent in here for the intelligence department, and that would be Tokinata. There's also characters like Yuha that often get brought up in this discussion as well, so we're going to talk about them, go over some of the things that they've done, talk about how they would scale to each other from an intellectual standpoint, and then hopefully by the end of this video, we have a conclusive answer of who the smartest character in Bleach is. Now, if you enjoy Bleach Power scaling content or whatever this technically counts as. I don't know if you can power scale intelligence, but I'm definitely going to try in today's video. But if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. That's basically all we do over here. Just trying to keep the Bleach community alive, trying to keep the discussions flowing. So if you enjoy that, again, like and subscribe is very helpful. You can click that join button if you're starving for more content, because that's where I upload my debates and past live streams. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and start diving right into this topic. So just to go ahead and rip off the band-aid for this one, towards the bottom of the top five is probably going to be Aizen and Yuha. Because while they certainly are pretty intelligent characters, they're also insanely powerful. So for instance, Aizen makes this plan to get the Oaken and then to go to the Soul Palace and kill God, all that good stuff. But the thing with Aizen is that if there's anything that ever goes wrong in his plan, he's more than strong enough to just brute force his way through certain parts of that plan. So for instance, the Espada fail him, they don't take out all the captains, then Aizen at that point is like, well, I'll just beat up all the captains. Which doesn't make him any less intelligent, but it does mean that his plans can be less complex because he can lean on his strength if it does come to that. The same thing goes for Yuha, and while I don't think Yuha is a dumb character, he kind of just piggybacks off of Aizen, since one of the main things with Aizen is that he plotted out Ichigo's entire life and is basically responsible for the entirety of Bleach as a whole. Yuha essentially takes that, but then says, actually, the whole Aizen thing was also part of my plan. So it's almost like Kubo is just escalating Yuha on a tier above, where it's like Aizen orchestrated all of the Bleach series and, you know, pretty much is responsible for everything regarding Ichigo. But then Yuha's like, nah, actually, that was a part of my plan. Which, when you consider, like, all the planning and the understanding of how characters are going to interact with each other, does take a crazy amount of, like, predictive ability. Because not only are you juggling, like, just hundreds of characters and their reactions, but you have to pinpoint exactly how they're going to react to one another to get the results that you want. So to be able to like manipulate all of that is insanely impressive. And if it wasn't just for Aizen's statement to Kisuke, I probably would still regard him as probably one of the most intelligent characters in the series. But unfortunately, Kisuke is said to be smarter than Aizen by Aizen himself. You know, Aizen is actually almost insulted because he's like, Kisuke, you're smarter than I am, but yet you subject yourself to the Soul King, like this lifeless corpse that doesn't do anything. You're taking orders from that and you're smarter than I am. You're one of the most brilliant minds in the Soul Society. Why are you doing this? This could also maybe get into different types of intelligence because the way that Kisuke is smart is a bit different from the way that Aizen is smart, right? Where Aizen has this psychological intelligence where he's able to like understand how people function and how they interact and he basically knows how to move people around this chessboard right he knows how to manipulate people effectively whereas kisuke can kind of understand people pretty well for instance when shuhei comes to do an interview with him in camp for your own world kisuke has a pretty good grasp of the situation and what shuhei's actually trying to get at you know he's able to dodge through the questions and all that and whatnot right but he's definitely more scientifically intelligent, right? That's definitely Kisuke's main thing, where he's breaking down the barriers between Hollows and Shinigami, and he's creating all these wacky inventions, and he just knows how the cosmology of the verse actually works. And anytime he has like some weird crackpot theory, it always comes out to being correct. Then we have Mayuri, who's always this intellectual rival to Kisuke. So that's kind of why you would have... Kisuke and Mayuri above somebody like Aizen, because if Aizen's going to admit that just generally Kisuke is more intelligent than he is, 
and Mayuri is an intellectual rival to Kisuke, you would have them in like a higher tier. And in fact, Mayuri actually bests Kisuke in the Thousand Year Blood War with Nemu, with him being able to create an artificial life that also evolves and adapts as it lives, he feels as though as he's now surpassed Kisuke. Although funnily enough, in Can't Fear Your Own World, Kisuke kind of has this moment where he's like, yeah, I kind of feel like Mayuri thinks that he surpasses me because he made this like artificial life that can keep on evolving as it fights and just keeps living. But then Kisuke just dismisses it after that. Like he blatantly mentions like, oh yeah, I feel like there's some crackpot scientist that feels like he surpassed me, mentions Nemu, and then he's like, but is that true? Probably not. So Kisuke is probably still on top, contrary to what we read in the Thousand Year Blood War. So generally right now we would have like Kisuke, Mayuri, kind of relative with Kisuke probably being a little bit more on top. Then like Aizen and Yuha, just for the fact that they have this very good ability to just make very massive large plans that pretty much work out for the most part. I mean, I don't think Aizen was expecting Ichigo to become this transcendent being and just smack the dookie out of him. Even though Aizen did kind of want a good fight, which maybe is just a personal flaw for him. Seeing as Ichigo does hypothesize that Aizen did ultimately want to lose, like he just wanted somebody to challenge him. Someone that could understand him, since Aizen was always just this immensely powerful being. Although that's kind of odd, because you also have someone like Yamamoto, who's on the same level as Aizen, who isn't super weird and wants to lose all the time. So perhaps that's just something with Aizen's age. Like, Aizen is still too young to come to, like, full grasp with his power, because you don't see that with Yuha. Keep in mind, Yuha is also someone that's about as old as Yamamoto, and is also immensely powerful, but he doesn't have this weird character flaw where he wants to lose. Again, probably just like a demerit of Aizen being so young. But then we come to the sleeper person. We come to the whole reason I made this video, Tokinata. Now, if you've read Can't Fear Your Own World, you're probably like, yeah, Tokinata is really, really smart. He's very big brain. But if you have not read Can't Fear Your Own World, and you don't mind a few spoilers here and there, I'm going to try to cover this as spoiler free as possible. But I may or may not have to mention specific things that happen in the novel. So I'll try my best. But you know, you've been half warned. So basically, in Camp for Your Own World, we have this dude, Tokinata. He's one of the heads of the noble families in the Bleach series. And he has this plan to replace the Soul King with Hikone and then manipulate Hikone from behind the scenes and basically just become like the most powerful person in all of Bleach, right? Because he's created a new Soul King that he can then manipulate and, you know, the Soul King will now do whatever he wants. It's almost like the Grand Priest theories from Dragon Ball Super where people are like, oh, the Grand Priest is manipulating Zeno. Zeno's the most powerful person in Dragon Ball at this point, and if he's manipulating him, then that makes him like technically the most powerful person. So it's almost like that. But here's the thing with Tokinata. Tokinata has like the same plan that Aizen has, except he's far weaker than Aizen. So his plan has to be absolutely more airtight because Tokinata does not have the luxury of just soloing the entire Gotei 13 with his raw power if something goes wrong. If something goes wrong for Tokinata and he has to fight like Ichigo or something, his plan's over. Like he blatantly admits like I had to wait for Ichigo to go on vacation and make sure that he would not come back for whatever reason because if he comes back, I'm screwed. Like my plan is over. Over. I don't have the strength of like Aizen or Yuha and I can't just fight my way out of a situation. In fact, even though Tokinata has a very broken Zanpak toe, if you're not aware, basically his Zanpak toe can copy the other abilities of other Zanpak toes because it's this like hugely royal Zanpak toe thing that Oetsu made. It's like a really powerful Zanpak toe or whatever. But the flaw is that because Tokinata is not very powerful, other captains and other characters in the Bleach series that are just worth their salt can just negate a lot of those abilities. For instance, he has Kyokasui Getsu in that Zanpak Toe. I'm sure a lot of us would agree that Kyokasui Getsu is one of the most powerful abilities in the Bleach series, but he can't use it as effectively because he lacks the power to actually just put strong people under the hypnosis. It's not like Aizen, where Aizen is already like so much stronger than everybody else that they have no hope of breaking out of his illusion. With Tokinata, they're just like, you're not strong enough to keep me in this illusion, and they break out. So that's basically my argument for Tokinata, is that he has to make this airtight plan that has to work despite him lacking strength. Like, for instance, again, Aizen and Yuha, they can make this big grandiose plan, but a lot of their plan involves like, 
I just walk in and I beat everybody up, which is like not all that complex. And you need to have a ridiculous level of power to do that. It's a very simple solution to a problem. Like hmm, instead of me just like manipulating everybody in the soul society and kind of getting myself into a winning position, I'm just going to go merc everybody. Like I'm just going to go to fake car turrets and I'm going to beat everybody up and I'm going to win. Not to also mention that Aizen and Yuha both had entire armies at their disposal and like an entire dimension to use. Aizen had all of Hueco Mundo, he had the Espada, the Arankar army, he had all of these crazy people under his disposal. Yuha has the Shadow Dimension, the Stern Ritter, all the random Quincy sold at that follow him. So they both have just so much more wiggle room because when it comes to Tokinata, it's him, Hikone, and like kind of Aurora half the time. And while those are two pretty powerful individuals, like he's even admitted himself like, oh man, if someone as powerful as Ichigo comes back in the picture, you know, I'm screwed. Whereas Aizen and Yuha really never had to worry about that. If Aizen didn't care about having a fair fight, he could have just murked Ichigo and fake Karakura Town, gone over to the Soul Society and won. If Yuha didn't care about having a good fight with Ichigo, he could have just murked him in the throne room and then, you know, gone back to the Soul Society, reformed all of reality and just won the battle right there. We can also obviously just chalk this up to writing because Kubo's not going to have Aizen or Yuha just murder Ichigo and end the story right there. He's not quite based enough to do something like that. But to add just like a cherry on top for Tokinata, his character flaw is that he explains his plans to people. And yet, despite him literally telling people exactly what he's doing, his plan is so good and so well thought out that they still can't stop it. There are numerous points in Can't Fear Your Own World where Tokinata just blatantly explains his plan or exposes himself to somebody, but there's nothing they can do to stop him because he's just got such an airtight plan, which that is absolutely insane. That's like me getting in the octagon with somebody, telling them I'm going to throw a kick using my left leg and I'm going to plant it on the right side of your face. I'm going to do a backflip as well. I could show them all the diagrams of how I'm going to do it, like the step-by-step -step motion, and then they still don't block it. It's absolutely insane. That's why I hold Tokinata above characters like Aizen and Yuha. Now, when it comes to Kisuke and Mayuri, that's a bit more debatable because throughout Camp for Your Own World, Kisuke and Mayuri are kind of trying to get through Tokinata's plan and they're trying to figure it out. So because of that, you could pretty much just put them all on like the same level. Because at times, it seems like they know exactly what's going on. At some times, they seem a little baffled. I would probably be more comfortable putting Mayuri and Kisuke above Tokinata though. Because for instance, when the whole surveillance bureau was introduced in the Soul Society, Mayuri was just like, oh, I instantly know what's going on. I know that... Tokinata over there is taking control of that. He's trying to use it to spy on everybody. He's like, dude, I, I already know what he's doing. But instead of putting a stop to it, Mayuri just made his own surveillance bureau. So I suppose we could count that as a counter and just say that Mayuri and Kisuke are therefore like above Tokinata. Or you could just say that they're all like relative. They're all in this like relative tier when it comes to intelligence by themselves. But I'd probably just have it be like Kisuke and Mayuri in like a tier one, then Tokinata in tier two, and then like Yuhan Aizen in tier three. Because then outside of that, there's other characters like Ginjo and Tsukushima who are pretty intelligent. Like they made the whole Ichigo plan, which isn't bad, but it's not like super complex. It's not like Aizen and Yuha scheming like all these different people and how they're going to interact and just absolutely writing out how someone's life is going to work out. There's also characters like Yamamoto and Unahana who aren't complete dummies. Like they're pretty intelligent but they're not nearly on the same level as some of these other guys like Kisuke Mayuri. Like I wouldn't put them on that same pedestal. Chutara is a pretty interesting pick because she breaks into Mayuri's lab, but it seems she does that more through like stealth and understanding how the technology works to get around it than like actually outsmarting Mayuri himself. But she could be a very interesting pick. Ichibe is also a very interesting option, but when you look at Ichibe, it's more like he has a lot of knowledge and less wisdom, right? Even though he's called like the wise old sage. It just seems like Ichibe just knows a lot of things, right? And by virtue of basically knowing how everything works in the series, he has a lot of perceived intelligence, but that's just because he knows how everything works because he's a really old dude that's been around for a long time. But I suppose you could make an argument for him being up there as well. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. I have not made a weird, like, whack Bleach video like this in a long time. 
usually it's like does this character beat up this character i don't know does this character beat this character but here we're like is this guy smarter than this guy i don't know like this plan was pretty good but this guy has to lean on his strength a lot and this guy had to make a plan that didn't rely on him just beating everybody up but is that better than this other plan? Like, I think that's really interesting. And I would love to hear guys' thoughts in the comments down below. My Discord is linked down in the description down below as well. If you want to come talk to me or other people in the Bleach community. If you want to debate, sharpen up your skills. You know, we have people down there. We have a debate chat. You can come do that. And then also, if you just had a massive disagreement with something I said in this video, like there was just something I said that just triggered you beyond belief, feel free to hop in there and we can talk it out. You can come in with the boxing gloves on or off, man. I could do it either way. You can have a nice friendly chat or we can throw down, but I'm throwing you in the dumpster if you do that. With all that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace late, guys.